Well, when we heard that it was going to be, there was the danger of it being knocked down, we decided as a group to come out here and start a vigil. And we started over there in just a little tent and a uh, ramshackle thing, like a shed that we built every morning. And we've gone on from there. The camaraderie is absolutely brilliant. We laugh and we joke and we, we realise, but we've got a purpose at the end of it all. And that's to save this beautiful building. Till the big day, yes. 11 days till we celebrate, a week on Friday, it'll be 100 days and I shall be making burgers and everyone's welcome. So what time do you get down here normally every morning? Half past uh, 10, uh, set, the, set the shed up as we call it, HQ. And uh, just get everything ready for anybody who's coming on for the day. I was on my way past here and it was day one and I was on my way to the um, doctors there and um, on the way back I just felt compelled to join up because I've grown up in this area and I have a strong connection with the area and at the back in the lock keeper's cottage there that's where my father was born in 1925. At a whim they just want to remove it and remove the last of our heritage I mean, over there, that symbolises them mills, if you go to the back of you there, there was like slavery, eh? And here was the way the people was healed when they got tangled up in their looms and that, etc. You know, when they came here, and uh, when there was no NHS going. We love it down here. There's something happens different, you know, nearly every day. There's people pulling up with stories to sell, sad ones, happy stories, people being, there's births, deaths, you know, amputations, the lot we've heard from this place. You can see the marina with the canal boats on. You can see the Royal Mill, you can see where they're supposedly going to build the school. There's absolutely no sign of Ancoats dispensary there at all. It's quite obvious looking at that, there was no future plans for the hospital. It's knock it down and um, um, do away with it and build apartment, apartments and make a quick, fast book at the expense of local people. in and out of there when I was a kid, even on bonfire night when I burnt my hand. I know it sounds funny, but at the end of the day, it's there. It was there for us, our community. We all know each other, we all look out for each other. We all watch each other when, if anybody needs any help, we'll help them out. We must be up to eight, eight, nine thousand on Between on eight and nine thousand. Easy. Easy. If we can get enough, I mean, 8,000 people are aware that it's going to be, they're trying to knock it down and that we want to save it and they're interested in the same thing. They think it's a beautiful building that should be preserved. There's nothing in this area for the use or for the old people, absolutely nothing. We can save it, that's one of the uses we want for it, or two of the uses we want for it, some community space. <laughs> Please, Andy. <laughs> Turn round and show our favourite sign. Well, anybody who's interested, please come down. Please come down, you're more than welcome. We're very approachable, and you'll always be guaranteed a cup of tea, and if we've got a biscuit, you can have one of them as well. How many is for tea? We've got enough time. Tea? Well, I think it's got to a situation now where we, we, we're starting, Urban Splash they're have actually notice. said, they're taking notice. notice, they've actually said they want to sit down with us and discuss what we can do at the building. Now, hopefully it'll be for, for it to have a future. The last link with the old Ancoats, that's what it is. I mean, there's no 
people that are in these more modern ones, they've no affinity to this area, none whatsoever. Most of them were bought as investments anyway. You know, so what we're losing here is the community. I took it as a um, yellow of the rising sun and red of the blood of the fallen comrades. <laughs> 